Let's first log out like this and make sure our netcat listener is running. And once we log back in, we can see the back door is triggered and we have our reverse shell. Each time the user logs in like this, our back door will be executed. This is Tux, a cute little penguin and also the official mascot for one of the best, if not the best, operating systems mankind has ever developed. And like Windows, Linux is so cool, easy to use, hardware friendly, and lets you do pretty much anything you want to it. You can literally modify the Linux kernel to fit your desires in any way you want, and it comes with a variety of distributions that fulfill all of your needs. However, to this day, a lot of things can go wrong with Linux if you don't know what you're doing. Backdoors or persistent mechanisms are techniques that allow you to have permanent access to a server or a machine after exploitation. In this video, we're going to implement backdoors or persistent mechanisms on a fresh installation of Kali Linux. So here I have two VMs running. The attacker machine, which is a slightly older version of Kali Linux, but still works. Here we have a netcat listener that will catch the reverse shells that will be triggered by the backdoors that we're going to implement. On the victim machine, we have the latest version of Kali Linux installed. Now, let's assume that you managed to get a reverse shell on this machine and you want to maintain a foothold. One of the things that you can abuse is the .shell RC file. This file is a shell script that runs when you open a terminal window or when you log in into an interactive shell. It's used to configure the behavior of the shell for a user, including setting environment variables, defining aliases, customizing the prompt, etc. Since this script runs every time the user logs into a shell, it makes it a target for backdoors. In our case here, we have two shell RC files, bash and zsh. The default interactive shell for Kali Linux is zsh, so that .zsh RC file is the one that will backdoor. You can determine the default shells for all users from the etc. passwd file, like this. What we need to do now is to open this file in any text editor. I'm using vim here. And scroll to the very bottom. And here we can insert our backdoor. I'll go with a simple reverse shell like this. Now, once you save the changes, each time the Kali user opens a terminal window, this reverse shell will run. Notice here there's nothing yet. But when I close and open the terminal again, we can see the reverse shell is executed and we have access to the victim machine. We can even make this stealthier by creating a seemingly legit script like this one and put the reverse shell or the malicious code inside it. Just make sure to include the shebang in the first line of the script like this and then make the script executable using chmod. Now back in the shell RC file, replace the reverse shell with the full path to the malicious script like this. And it doesn't have to be at the end of the file, we can put it somewhere in the middle to make it harder to spot. You get the idea. Now if I save and exit and restart a terminal, we still get our reverse shell back no problem. The next thing that we can abuse is the shell building command such as cd or change directory. These commands can be hijacked with custom shell functions. Back in a .zshrc file, we can write a function like this one that hijacks the cd command. In this function, we first run our malicious script, then we execute the real cd command and pass to it the provider arguments so that the user doesn't think that there's something wrong. Now, if I save and exit and restart a terminal and also make sure my netcat listener is running, I can cd to any directory like this and the reverse shell will be triggered. Pretty cool and scary at the same time. Every time the backdoored user changes directory, this backdoor will run. The next script file that we can abuse is the .profile script. This script is executed when a user logs into their system, typically through a terminal, SSH, or graphical login. We can backdoor this file by inserting our check for updates, quote unquote our reverse shell file, at the bottom like this. And then we save and exit. This backdoor will be triggered each time the Kali user logs into their system, whether it was through graphical login or SSH, or the terminal. Let's first log out like this and make sure our netcat listener is running. And once we log back in, we can see the back door is triggered and we have our reverse shell. Each time the user logs in like this, our back door will be executed. The next thing that we have on our list today is the path environment variable. When you run any command like the id command for example, the Linux operating system searches for the elf binary that maps to the id command in specific directories. These directories are stored in the path environment variable like so. Each directory is separated by a column. These directories are divided into multiple categories. We have user-specific directories, system-wide, root-only, and so on. When a certain command is run by a user, the OS searches for the binary that maps into this command in these directories by order. It first checks the first directory, if not found, switches to the next one, if not found, switches to the next one, and so on, until the binary is found. We can take advantage of this behavior and hijack any command we want, since we have write access to the first directory in this environment variable. Let's try to hijack the id command. We first need to navigate to this directory and create a new 
new script file called id. Inside the script, we will first put our shebang, then we execute our good old check for updates to virtual shell script. And to make everything look completely normal, we run the original id command with its full path like this. Now save the changes and make sure to add the execution permission to the script. And also make sure to restart the terminal for the changes to take effect. And make sure the netcat listener is running too. Now when I run the id command, it will first execute our malicious script giving us a reverse shell. And then the original id command will run to make everything look completely normal. Like this. And here is our reverse shell. But what if we don't have write permission to any of these directories here? Does that mean it's game over for us? Well actually no, there's a way to get around this. Do you remember the dot profile script that we abused earlier? Inside this file you'll find an if clause that alters the path environment variable for the Kali user. We can prepend the full path to a directory that we have write permission to like so. This directory doesn't exist by the way so I have to create it first. Once inside this directory, we do the same thing we did before. And once we're done, we have to log out and log back in, since the .profile script is only executed after login. Now, when we check the path environment variable, we can see our directory is added. And when we run the id command, we get our reverse shell back without any issues. The next thing that we can abuse for backdoors is cron jobs. Cron jobs are scheduled tasks that run at specified intervals. Let's say we want to run our reverse shell every minute. We can just open the cron tab with cron tab l and insert 5 asterisks followed by the full path to our reverse shell script like so. If you want to specify another interval for your script but you're kinda confused, check this cool website. Now if we save and exit and wait for a minute to pass, we get back our reverse shell as usual. Next, we have SSH keys. If the server happens to run SSH, which is likely the case, you can backdoor using SSH keys. On your attacker machine, generate SSH keys using SSH key gen like so. Then copy the public key to the victim machine. In the user home directory, create a .sh folder if it doesn't exist. And inside it, create a file called authorized keys and place your public key in it. Now, on your attacker machine, chmod600 a private key and then use it to SSH to the victim machine like so. We can even be more savage and create a cron job that writes the public key to the authorized keys file in case it was discovered and removed. Last but not the least, one of my favorite backdoors, LD preload. If we run the LDD command on the ID binary for example, we can see here the libraries that are loaded into the memory space of this binary when it's executed. What LD preload does is that it injects a library that you specify into the memory space of any command you run. For example, I have the C code that writes the full path to the reverse shell script into the .zshrc file. We can compile this code using GCC like this. The dash shared flag here to make sure it's compiled to a shared object. Or a library that can be dynamically linked to programs at runtime. The dash fpic flag is for position independent code, which allows the library to be loaded into different addresses in the memory space. Once it's compiled, we set its full path to the ld preload environment variable, and we can add it to the .zshrc this hrc file so that it gets loaded each time the user logs in. Now if I save and exit and restart the terminal, every time a command is run, our malicious code will be executed too. And if we check the loaded libraries for the id command for example, we can see our malicious library here. Keep in mind that all of these persistent mechanisms do not require root privileges. If we had root privileges, we would do very, very scary, horrible, nasty stuff. If this video did well, I'll create a sequel to it with more advanced persistent mechanisms. So don't forget to sub.